you ready, wife? Um, I guess. Right. You ready for me to be ready? Yeah, I need you to be ready. Mm. Okay, I'll say my thought that was going on in my head for another all all right, the time. All right. But I'm hey. ready for this segment, yes. Yeah, okay. Hello, all. Hey, welcome to another edition of Pillow Talk with T and Tay. We thank you for watching. We thank you for taking time out to view us and hear our thoughts on things. And hopefully it's making a difference right now and, and all the times that we've shared. And it's been great. And uh, we thank you for all the feedback. We also, you know, even any segment, just comment. Anytime you view it, share it with someone, comment. What have you, whatever you need to do and uh, repeat and run over it. You know, just talk with us, and uh, we just great that you took time out, and we just great to be able to share our wisdom and share our input about it. Ooh. Good job, handsome. Sorry, I'm just teasing because you did such a great job bringing us in. Thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. you. You're welcome. Boy. I appreciate you. You're welcome. You're oh. welcome. Yeah, you, you did a good job bringing us on in. Um, again, like you said, welcome back, y'all. Um, thank y'all for joining again today. Um, I don't need to say much else. He just did it. You know, he intro the scene. So uh, I'm going to just, you know, get moving on what we're talking about today since uh, he did such a great job. I cannot get past. I'm sorry, I'm hitting you, paying you up. Yeah. You did we, such a great job. I've already been tore up enough with my team, okay? I don't need to be tore up enough <laughs> right now, all right? I'm sorry. Okay. Mine lost this year too, so. Yeah, they did lose. Uh, okay. Well, you kind of said that kind of fast there. Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. No pun intended. I bet. Okay. Anywho, anywho. Um, so today's topic will be um, allowing your children to have a voice. Um, how it's uh, oftentimes we feel as though they're kids and they don't have an opinion and don't have a say so, but we found that um, allowing them to have a voice helps them feel valued, um, helps them feel important, helps them feel involved in their um, in their life. Yeah. So if you feel it's necessary um, for your children to have a voice and for you to be open to hearing that voice, yeah. there's a time, t too many times where we go about life and say, um, you know, no, I don't want to hear what you have to say or <clears throat> what I say is final and I don't want to know what your thoughts or opinion are about it um, being because it's something that we've been taught and conditioned to do all our lives. It's all we've ever heard because I said so. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying sit and have a debating match with your children. No. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying go back and forth with them trying to get them to do their chores and they're trying to debate with you why they feel like they should do their chores. Mm -hmm. Those are things I'm not saying. I'm just saying in regards to just life and things that they want to do or, or are interested in, hearing them out. Hearing what their viewpoints are about it and understanding where they're coming from with it versus just forcing your stuff on them and not allowing them to be able to speak um, freely about what's going on. Having that open door policy with them let alone they can come and talk to you about anything helps them to um, develop into good young men and young women with great character. Um, it helps them to be able to have those conversations, the difficult conversations with adults as they get older, um, when they're in work environments, uh, uh, relationships and things of that nature. They know how to have those conversations versus um, just getting that information from the peers. They're able to have a candid conversation with their mom or dad in regards to it to help them. And it, then it allows them to be able to speak up for themselves. Um, it's, as far as asking questions, and uh, I'm trying to expound on that a, a little bit more. Um, it helps their identity, mm -hmm. you know, uh, their place. Their, that way the teacher, even though when they're asking those questions or giving their, that feedback, that that teacher knows that they're on the right track or that teacher even hears their point of view about the uh, matter. Mm -hmm. And it's just very important for uh, kids to get that identity, to get to understand their identity, their place, and who and shaping of who they're gonna become. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I, we we uh, me and Tay always make sure that we listen to our children and listen to a child speaking and 
sometimes it gives you a different uh, outlook on things as well. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised of their uh, opinion. Uh, the profession I was in and uh, in the profession I'm still kind of in is uh, dealing with public service. And I'm always dealing with, I see kids and I'm always dealing with different ages of kids. And the kids have a lot of good viewpoints. It's, uh, it's interesting the different takes that they have. And sometimes it, it brings uh, clarity and changes your own thinking. Mm -hmm. It does. It helps you to look at it from a different light um, because they they are wise. They're wise young men and women. And like we said, I think a few videos back, it's like you can learn something from everybody. No matter how young or old they are, they have something to share that you can learn from. So don't uh, take for granted their thoughts, their views, their opinion, and just dismiss it. You know, you want to be open to hearing yeah. what they have to say and kind of like take, you know, you know, just process that information. Um, at the end of the day, you are going to be the final decision maker, but it does help for you, help you to be able to look at it a little differently. Help you to kind of help. Uh, it helps you to process or um, develop how you're going to respond to their situation versus just going just whatever you say goes um, or whatever your mindset is and you're forcing again yourself your views your opinion on them versus allowing them to have that outlook or that um, um, ability to express themselves and if i could take a little uh, add to it mm -hmm. i don't know if this is what you're going to get into next was the fact of saying you know if you were wrong as a parent mm -hmm. or as an adult figure or, you know, whatever it may be, to admit that you were wrong. Yeah. Because their their take on it was correct and uh, how it should have been handled. And you're like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I was wrong in that. Mm -hmm. Admitting that to a child or admitting that to a younger uh, a figure, it, it has so much weight to it. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of young people, they changed once they uh, had an adult to tell them, uh, or admit that they were wrong, own up to they were wrong, and and, and they were like you know, uh, I don't know, they were, they it, they became their uh, their persona. All of a sudden, it changed. You could tell their persona changed. They got more confident mm -hmm. because of so, wow, somebody validated my opinion about it, mm -hmm. and I was like you know that's great because I'm like keep it up, you know because you know yeah I was wrong and uh, don't be afraid of uh, being wrong as an adult you're not going to hit it every time nor do they hit it every time but you're also teaching them to be okay with being wrong about something mm -hmm. as they get older yeah everybody's going to be right all the time it, and just like what he would what, what he's saying in regards to taking ownership and, and um accepting where you were you know in the wrong in the situation it helps them to develop that ability to do the same thing to take ownership for the things that they're doing that they may be wrong in because a lot of times you know they don't they're always uh thinking well my parents are perfect my parents are perfect they never do no wrong or my parents think they're perfect and that's not the case no you know <laughs> you know we begin then that teaches parents. yeah and it teaches them the wrong idea persona that they have to be perfect parents so they have to be perfect people when they get out into this world versus um being able to learn from their mistakes you know and that's how you learn is by making mistakes and learning from them mm -hmm. that's how you grow that's how you mature that's how you build and i feel like allowing them to have a voice helps them to continue to grow mature and build into the young men and women they're, they're called to be um, we don't want to stunt their growth by um, silencing them. No. You know, with they, when I say, um, even my, my 11 year old has a great outlook on a lot of things and just sitting, if you sit and you listen to them, wow. it will blow your mind. It, it really could. It will blow your really mind really because they really have good outlooks mm -hmm. about stuff. They can analyze something because they're sitting back and they're watching you and how you do things and they're watching you know mom and dad watching them they're watching their siblings and how they do things they're going to mimic these things yes but then they also are, are they're absorbing what you're doing and being able to see a different life so if you ask them like do you know why you got in trouble for abcd they can honestly sit back and tell you yes i did this 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 and this you know and that's why i got in trouble yeah. um but it, that's because you're allowing them that opportunity to um allow their thought process to develop more allow their opinions to be able to be um, of value and of weight you're giving them that ability to develop and grow and mature where some people go well you know they should they should be in a child's place and not have to talk to a parent or an adult how do they learn how to talk with adults if you don't allow them to talk with adults learn to grow to build you know you got to give them that space of growing um 
you know, they're going to grow up fast on you. And I, me personally, and I don't know if I can speak for my husband as well, but me personally, I would rather me be the one that's helping them to grow and develop versus them getting that information from outside, from oh, peers yeah. and stuff. They're going to get some anyway, but I want the majority of it to come from me yeah. or it can come from us. You know, I don't want it to just be all from out there that the people outside were listening to them or they're looking for love and attention or someone to just listen to them. And because you're not giving it to them, they're going to go find it outside. They're going to find this group or these people or this activity to get engaged in. And it may not always be a positive one. And here it is. Now you're losing your teen. You're losing your preteen. You're, you're losing your adult child to uh, being involved in different things that are negatively impacting their lives because you didn't take a moment to sit and listen to them. Very important. So it's, it's, it's necessary to um, allow them to have a voice, to listen to their viewpoints about different things and different aspects of life and just to really truly be in the moment with them. Give them your undivided attention when you're talking. Don't have them talk to you. And I'm guilty of it. I've done it before and I have to catch myself because I've done it to where they're wanting to talk to me and I'm engulfed in something. I'm trying to finish up on my phone or um <clears throat> maybe watching something and they want to talk to me and I may keep looking up at the thing that's going on. I had to learn to say, okay, let me stop exactly what I'm doing or say, hold on, let me finish up this so I can give you my undivided attention so that way I can hear what it is you have to say and give you, you know, what you're needing from me right now. Right. You know, will, I, will we be available every minute, every second that they need us? Not always, but we want to try to be there as much as we possibly can for them because we want to be those ones that are giving them the influence, especially if we're giving good influence to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You agree on that? Oh, me? I definitely agree. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm on the same, on the same uh, boat way with you. Okay. You got in that boat yeah, with me. You I took your paddle? Yes, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's necessary. I mean, like, I know coming up a lot of times, I can't recall a time where I was able to have a full conversation with my mom about something. Um, it wasn't to where I could tell her what I was dealing with or what I was facing. Um, because I was fearful of how she would respond versus um, being open, being able to be open enough to go and have a conversation with her and talk with her about what's going on with me and what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling and get guidance from her. I, I couldn't get that because I didn't have the ability to do that. It wasn't, it wasn't um, heard of that you go and you can have a conversation. Well, in my house, I'll say that. I won't say for everybody else. I can't speak for his house when he grew up. I can't speak for... Um, y'all houses with how y'all grew up, but I know in my house it wasn't heard of to come in there and want to have a conversation like that because it could go left real quick versus um, with the way we parent, we have that conversation. We have that open door policy. Like they can literally come and talk to us about anything. Mm -hmm. Now, will they share everything? Probably not. Um, they, they probably won't, but for the most part, they can come and talk to us about anything that's going on and get our viewpoint on it. If that's what they're seeking or if it's just they just needed to talk and, and, and be heard and just sit and hear them. Right. A lot of times they don't want us to give feedback. A lot of times they just want us to listen. They just need somebody to listen to them. You know, help them talk through it. By the time they're done talking about it, they're, they've figured it out. Yeah. Or they got the answer they're looking for. We need to allow them to have a voice and allow them to share what's going on within themselves so that way they can um, be able to figure out or know how to handle difficult situations as they come up. So I, I feel like it's very necessary, it very necessary to allow them to have a voice, um, to know that they're, let them know that their opinion matters, mm -hmm. um, that they can, their feelings are validated, um, and that, you know, we want to focus in on helping them to develop in the young men and women they want, they need to be. Um, there are going to be situations where they will take advantage of that and, and mm -hmm. try to um, twist it on you. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that. Watch it. We've had it happen. That's why we know. Yeah. You know, so just be mindful that, yes, definitely listen to them, but also um, keep that level of authority where you need it to be and help, help them understand that they're not on the same playing field as you. You're listening to them, but you're the ultimate decision maker in, in a lot of situations that they're dealing with, especially when they're under the age of 18 still living at home. You know, you are you are the final decision maker when it's all said and done. Yes, we want to listen to what you say and give and understand your viewpoints in it, but we we're going to be the final say. So we're going to um, take the things you tell us into consideration, and that's going to help us to make our decision based on what you've given us. 
But at the end of the day, we will be that final decision maker, so to speak. So we still keep our level of authority, but we just don't feel like we are just dictators, so to speak. Yeah. If that helps. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, all right, that's all I got on that. You got anything else, babe? That's all I got too, babe. All right. I hate being Tay, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him be let him be Tay today for him. Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let him be call me Tay today, but I'm gonna move on and get off that soapbox. Um, thank you guys for joining us again for another episode of Philo Talk with T and Tay. Um, we really enjoy you guys tuning in and watching what we're doing, and we hope that it's been helpful to someone. We hope that if not every topic, at least one topic has helped you with something you may have been dealing with, you may have had questions about, and you want to know how everybody else is handling it. Um, we hope that it's been helpful. So definitely tune in next week for our next segment of Pillow Talk with T and Tay. Um, you never know what we're going to talk about. It's just whatever hits our heart that we feel, like it, we feel like needs to be addressed and yeah. talked about. Um, that we may have experienced or we may have seen someone else experience that we can give our viewpoints on. Um, again, we're not experts or perfectionists in it. I'm just a certified life coach. Again, no change. Huh? Um, com uh, definitely leave us your comments down below. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And definitely share it with somebody else who could benefit from the content because we know there's somebody out there that may be dealing with the situation, if it's not you, that can benefit from it. So definitely share. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> all right. That's all we've got for today. Um, unless there's anything else I want to shut you up. No. 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 Else. I know how to jump in there. <laughs> I know you do. Oh. I tackle my way in. Oh, my gosh. Tackle. No pun intended, huh? Better luck next year. Anywho, thanks guys for watching. We hope you guys have a great day. And as T always says, be safe, be well. Um, and enjoy your week, the rest of your week and your weekend, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. See ya. <laughs> you gonna get, you gonna get caught on camera doing that. If if there was these people were flies on the wall, they'd be like, oh, it's hungry boy. I tell you, can you move your hands like I said that? <laughs> Honey, uh, yeah. I thought you said you weren't gonna be. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to get back up. Well, you the one who over here. Yeah. It's you. Valentine's still laying on. I guess. <laughs> I guess it is. Um, you gonna this way? Your hand gonna be. Right My here. hand gonna go where it wants to go. Oh, what if I want your hand right there? Uh, well, I almost said that back in the day where <laughs> it, it started with tough, yeah, but I leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, see, you gonna make me go in. You see, and I was just saying that I wasn't gonna say it because I ain't gonna be tough. It now, America ain't gonna get me. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I ain't say it. Oh, handsome. You just, just, just. Careful. <laughs> Cautious. Tread lightly, bud. Tread lightly. Yes. Careful. Mm -hmm. All right.